What's up guys? Hey, welcome to your training on four week training cycles and why we use them, right? Now my goal here is to give you guys a very clear picture on the why and the how behind um, each training program that we build, but also give you a little bit of insight into where that four week training program fits within the big picture of this 100 day intensive. Now, when we talk about a four week training cycle and we talk about a 100 day training program, really what we're talking about is periodization, right? And periodization is how we are going to structure each individual training day in terms of how you move from your warm up to your cool down to how does each day fit within a one week plan? How does a one week plan fit within a four week plan? And how does a four week plan fit within a 12 week plan or a 100 day program, which for you guys on the 100 day intensive, it's a 15 week program. Um, what I do when I think about with that is periodization. And when I think about periodization, I think about my homie, Mr. Miyagi, right here. Now, Mr. Miyagi, he's an OG, uh, one of the best coaches of all time. If you don't know who this guy is, um, let me know. I'll give you a refund for this program. I um, mean, you should take that money and, and, I don't know, do something else. Go watch this movie. Go on a date. Watch this movie because it's a phenomenal movie when it comes to coaching. Now, Mr. Miyagi, what he did is he found Danielson. And Danielson was kind of a low-confidence kid being picked on. Um, kind of down in the dumps kid. And he took him and he slow cooked his progress all the way to the point where, uh, you know, he's he's in the tournament and he's killing the Cobra Kai and uh, kind of turning into a completely different version of himself. And what Mr. Miyagi did was he used the notion of progressive overload. And what progressive overload is essentially the method that Mr. Miyagi used to take Daniel from A to Z, right? So from being picked on to... Uh, doing the wax on, wax off drill that Danielson's like, why am I doing this? He didn't understand, but there was a plan um, to the point where he's, he's running on the beach. He's standing on that pole doing that standing kick thing. Um, then all the way to the point where he's blindfolded and Mr. Miyagi's throwing punches at him and Danielson's blocking all of them, right? That's progressive overload. He slowly took his skills and his abilities and he built them up over time to reach an end goal, Right. So progressive overload by definition is the gradual intensification of training volume, intensity, or duration when working towards the achievement of an end goal. So for us in these 100 days, we have laid out an end goal, right? So how are we going to progress our volume, intensity, and duration so that we can achieve the physical goals that we've set out that we want to achieve on day 100 of this program? Now, um, here's a nice graphic that I like to think about is like my dude right here. Right. When he first started out, this might be the heaviest thing he can carry. Right. Well, this this little baby is going to get a little bigger. So now now he's getting pretty big. Right. But still has got to carry his bull. I don't know why he's carrying his bull, but he is. Um, so he's got to increase his strength. He's got to progressively overload his abilities so he can get to here. And then likewise, right, when this bull is a big hoss like this, um, this dude, he's got to have gone through some progressive overload to get to the point where he can carry a nice heavy bull like that. Now. When we talk about four-week training cycles, right, a four-week training cycle fits into what we consider a 12-week year. Now, in every program that I design, I only write up to 12 weeks at a time, uh, simply because we've got to see how the program progresses before we can plan beyond that point. So if you write out a 12-month annual plan, uh, you're performance of your program in the first couple weeks, first couple months is going to dictate kind of where things go. So a 12 week year is the best setup that I've found. And it's the one that we use within the 100 day intensive. Now I know you're saying 12 weeks, that's not hundred days. Really your 100 day program is a 15 week program. So it is a 12 week year after a three week GPP plan. And I'll show you what all that looks like here in a second. But if we think about a 12 week year, right? The 12 weeks, that's your macro cycle right? Each four week phase, that's your meso cycle. And then each individual week, that's your micro cycle, right? So again, your macro cycle is your 12 week program. Your meso cycle is your four week phase. And your micro cycle is a one week block within that four week phase. So let's talk about your 100 day intensive. Like I mentioned on the last slide, you have three four week blocks that make up your 12 week year. And you have a GPP phase on the front end, right? So your GPP phase, that's your introduction phase, right? That's where we are introducing strength training, cardiovascular training to your body. We're building up your basic capabilities. 
Then we're going to move into phase one, which technically is considered your accumulation phase. We're building your body's capacity to do work, right? Can it handle more training volume? Can it handle more weights? Can it handle less recovery time? And then we're going to follow that same trend as we move into phase two or our intensification phase. We're taking what we did here and we're putting it on rocket fuel and we're going to try and push even harder, right? Heavier weights, more volume, more sets, uh, less rest. And then we're going to do the same thing in the last four week phase, your realization phase, phase three, where we're really going to just put the pedal down and we're going to finish these 100 days very, very strong. So your 12 week year is your accumulation, your intensification, your realization, and that follows your three week GPP phase. Now, why does this matter, right? When I'm training people, my goal is I want them to have movement mastery. And for us to reach movement mastery, we've got to reach a volume of total work within each individual movement so that we can move it with mastery, right? So think about this. We know that strength training is a skill, right? Let's say um, a barbell RDL on week one of a phase is going to look completely different than a barbell RDL on week four of that training phase because you've done it four times, right? You've gotten better at how it should feel. What muscles should you feel it at? How, how hard should you grip? Everything like that builds towards the skill of strength training. And if we want to train uh, for longevity, it means we need to learn how to execute each movement with a high level of precision, right? Um, this, this, are you going to hear me say this a thousand times in this program? This isn't fucking CrossFit, right? We are going to be good lifters. We're going to move with a high level of precision and we're going to train smart. Okay. We're going to do that because we want to train for a long period of time. And if we beat the shit out of our body by not treating strength like a skill and not trying to execute the movements with a high level of precision, we're not going to be able to do this forever. Right. And that's how you die old and weak. And I'm not willing to do that. And I, I really don't want that for any client that I'm working with. All right. So um, we also want to build familiarity within the training sessions, right? Because that's going to allow you to maximize your time in the gym. Um, you're going to do the same lifts for four weeks in a row. Of course, progressed over those four weeks, but the same exercises. So week one uh, might be a little clunky while you're learning, okay, what does this terminology mean? How should this go? How should I set this up? But week two, you're going to get better. Week three, you're going to get better. And by week four, right, you should be, I'm going into the gym. I don't even need to look at my program. I know what I've got. And every phase that you do past that is going to get better, right? So you get to the point where, I mean, you're, if you get to week five or six in this program, you should be very familiar with how to operate within the weight room because I want you guys in and out in 45 minutes or less, right? You should hit the door, get in, do your mobility, do your lifts and get out, right? We're not going to live in the gym. So I want you to be able to maximize your familiarity within each training session. And then I know the first three of these – we're talking about the strength side of things, but endurance needs to be introduced linearly as well, right? We can't do the training volume in phase uh, one that we're going to do in phase four, right? It's got to go like this in terms of how we progressively build up your capacity for work within your endurance training. Now, let me grab a sip of water. Now, so your training progressions, um, I'm going to cover this pretty quickly, but the way that we would progress on the strength side of things is we're going to increase your sets or your reps. Think about like week one, we could go three by five. Week two, we might go four by five, right? Or we might go three by five week one, three by eight week two, right? So we can increase your total workload based on your sets or your reps. We could also increase the weight that you've lifted, right? So let's say a bench press, we might program three by five across the board for all four weeks, but we might go 135 for the first week, 145 for the second week, 155 for the third week, 165 for the fourth week. And so we've progressed your strength while staying at the same volume. Or we can change the tempo of your movements. You're going to see um, within the program some isometrics and some eccentric movements. So that's just a way of making a movement and making it more challenging so we can get a little bit more results from it. Now, on the endurance side of things, right, we could either increase or decrease your intervals, right? We could go, if we're doing a 30 on, 30 off, high uh, at an intensive interval, Right, that 30 on, 30 off, we might do 10 rounds and then the next round 12 and then 14, or we might go 30 on, 30 off, then 40 on, 20 off, and then 50 on, 10 off, or something like that to increase or decrease. Or we can change the tempo of your active periods, right? Where we give you an RPE scale, and let's say week one, we want you at an RPE of six, 
Week two, we want you an RPA of seven. Week three, an eight. Week four, an RPA of nine. So we can increase your progressions that way. And then we can also just increase your total volume, right? So a good example of this is your zone two cardio. Uh, you might start out 30 minutes week one, 35 minutes week two, 40 minutes week three. I hope you guys get the picture of kind of how we do that. I'm sure you guys are all smart enough to understand that stuff. Okay, so we want to think about uh, blending our strength and our endurance, right? So we know that fatigue is cumulative, right? Both fatigue from uh, what we do in the weight room, fatigue from life, fatigue from work, things like that. It is cumulative, right? If you are very stressed out in your personal life, you're probably not going to perform super great in the, in the weight room, right? They just affect each other. So we want to think about a four-week training program and a 12-week training cycle to be sustainable, right? So that training becomes a lifestyle and not just a moment of motivation. A lot of people sign up for a program because they're motivated in this moment. They go hard and then they burn out. We're not doing that. We're going to go like this. We're going to slowly build up your capacity so that this is sustainable and becomes a lifestyle. And then also, like everybody in this program is not a professional athlete. You have jobs and lives and uh, social lives and families and other commitments outside of this program. So we have to allow you to recover so that you can perform your best within each training cycle. The worst thing I can do as a coach is smoke you in the gym and then you're too tired to play with your kids, right? That's not what we're going to do here. We're going to train strategically. We're going to train smart. And we do it by following four and 12 week training programs. Now, one of the ways that we manage our stress is uh, the high low approach. Now, uh, right here shown is this is Ben Johnson. He's a Canadian sprinter, one of the best to ever do it. And this is Charlie Francis, um, who is the best sprint coach, I think, of all time. Um, you probably don't know his name because they were both banned from the Olympics. Charlie Francis was pumping him through with so much juice. Um, but that's another story. He's still a great coach, and his thought process is something that has crossed over from sprinting to what we're doing here. Now, his thing is the high-low approach. When we think about our central nervous system, we can't be in a fight-or-flight uh, sympathetic nervous system all the time, right? We have to live in a recovery sympathetic nervous system the great majority of the time. And the way that we can do that and affect that through our training programs is through the high-low approach. There's going to be days in this program that are high CNS, ideally three days a week. That's going to be your high CNS. There's going to be days in this program that are low CNS. Again, ideally three days per week. And then there's going to be one day where I don't want you to do anything. I want you to do your daily mobility and walk with the kids and that's it, right? But we've got to have a blend between the high and the low so you can recover and keep that cumulative effect of stress under control. So what does an ideal week look like, right? Um, let's look through, through this week. This would be um, one of our training phases where we're doing three days of strength, three days of endurance. Um, so Sunday would be a low CNS with zone two. You're going to lift Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Two of those being high CNS. Typically our Friday lifts are going to be more uh, like pump chasing, abs, uh, kind of hypertrophy, building muscle mass. So that is a low CNS. You're going to get a high CNS from your intensive intervals. And uh, then you'll get your low CNS from your extensive intervals and your recovery. So as you can see here, it is three, truly three C low CNS days, three high CNS days. And then your recovery technically is a low CNS day, but I don't count it towards your three and three count, if that makes sense. So over the course of these 100 days, what is this going to look like? Um, weeks one through three, that's your introduction, your GPP phase. That does not count towards your 12-week year. Phase one is your accumulation phase. That's weeks four through week seven. Phase two is your intensification phase. That's weeks eight through 11. And phase three is your realization phase. That's weeks 12 through 15. Now, one last thing that I want to touch on this, and I'm, I'm sure I'm beating a dead horse, but if this is the horse that I beat, I'll, uh, I'll die on this hill. Okay, so... The narrative that harder is always better is the number one reason that fitness is not sustainable for most people. It's just a fact. People try and go too hard, too fast. All of their days are high days. They don't have any low days. Um, and they're not following a program that's going to allow them to progress from A to Z in a smart way. Uh, that's why people burn out on programs. And that's why the people say, you know, I once was in good shape. Or, man, one time I was in great shape. I remember this time I was in great shape. We're not playing that game, right? We're going to be in great shape for the rest of our lives, and it's going to start with these 100 days. That needs to be our mindset. 
And your, your recovery and the balance of stress is truly what dictates your long-term success. I know uh, I mentioned it one more time is you have to have days that are low CNS so that you can enjoy the rest of your life. So that the benefits that we get from training can be something that benefits the rest of our lives. So I hope that makes sense as to why we do the four week training cycles, um, why we're doing a 12 week year and uh, the approach to why we're doing our hard days and our easy days kind of succinctly within one training approach. So I hope it helps. If you've got any questions on it, drop me a line. I'd love to answer them and I'll see you guys on the next training.